I'm uh, just going to introduce myself quickly for those of you I haven't met or on Twitter. Um, I currently work in the WA public sector. I have quite a mixed background um, before that, having gone through architecture, corporate finance, and I'm now working for the state's economic regulator. Um, and I work in our inquiries branch, so we're very research focused and quite often doing something new in a sphere where I haven't worked before. So I have a fairly big requirement to uh, do research, both publications and for economic data. Um, in the last year, uh, I've also been working with Keith Moss, who will speak later about this, um, on a GovPond website, which does the first meta search of all of, I think, all of the data dot st uh, state, except New South Wales, who like to be different, I think. Is that right, Keith? <laughs> and it does Syro and Langate and a bunch of other things as well. Um, but when we started it, um, I was working for uh, working on the data sets to give to people for GovHack. And so I was actually manually going through the WA data because we're one of only two jurisdictions that doesn't have a data.state. And was increasingly staggered by how much was out there. I knew there was a lot of data that was hard to find, but um, thousands and thousands of really good data sets um, and hadn't realised exactly how much we do release, even if we don't release it very well or in a good format or in a way that turns up in a search. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today, hopefully with something quite practical about very basic ways to start um, a taste of different ways, both in person and online and offline, in doing research to find data and information from the public sector and that's useful in the public sector. Um, also quite interested in doing research with us off the data from libraries and galleries and historic stuff. Um, some of my side projects are involved in doing research for um, my local history organisation and stuff like that. And I'm also part of um, one of the ambassadors in Perth for the Open Knowledge Foundation. So we're starting to see a community of here, uh, people in the state with a broad interest in open data and open culture and so forth. Uh, don't worry too much about taking notes if you don't mind to. Um, I've put up a couple of links there and I'll show them again at the end. Um, you can get the slide set and there's also pretty much anything I mentioned should be in a bundle of links as well on Bitly. So I'm going to start with probably the most boring bit first, so I'm sorry for that. But um, what I found people don't do in my organisation or pretty much anywhere, when you're starting to look for data, it's, you're going to make life a lot easier by doing the groundwork. So I will run over that quickly. And the first question I tend to ask is what I'm looking for because there are so many different sorts of data. Um, and if you can clarify whether you want it from a particular period, whether it needs to be live, what format, whether it's spatial, numerical, financial, that is very helpful, but quite often it's actually quite hard to do unless you know why you're looking for it in the first place. So if you can sit down and actually talk about what you're trying to produce, whether it's something for a report or evidence for something, or whether you're trying to get a broad overview of what is actually out there in a, uh, a subject, and indeed whether it's for someone else, because when people come to you and say, hey, I need this, and they don't tell you clearly what they're trying to make. I find I generally come back with the wrong thing and they haven't actually articulated why they're looking for it and what they're going to use it for. So it's really, really important to ask that first and it's important to ask people who you are asking for data as well because it's very, very easy to misunderstand what someone wants if you don't know why they're using it. So if you can start by going over the key questions and working out what agencies have the oversight over the data, it's very useful. Um, another thing I found in the last year is even working in the Western Australian public sector, there are so many more agencies and departments that I even knew. There is a list of 100 or something on Wikipedia. So that's really handy. Um, and I found people in my organisation don't necessarily know which other ones exist either. The other thing that's really useful is thinking as well as about the people who collect and who uh, archive and make data available, sometimes finding out who else might use it is very useful because they might have it, they probably have a contact, they may have references to other sources, and they may have gone through the battle of actually getting something difficult already. So if you can actually look at people who are doing something similar to what you're doing, so if I work in economics and I talk to Treasury and people doing economic analysis in Treasury, they quite often actually have stuff that's useful to me, so I don't need to do the groundwork there. And then, of course, you have the broader stuff. Statistical agencies have it. Um, sometimes stuff disappears from statistical agencies and has gone into archives. Um, one example is the health data, which uh, we were finding for GovHack, which is very interesting. Um, it's quite good on the ABS. It's excellent on the Institute of Health and Welfare. Um, but if you go back to mortality data, we actually have it 
going back to, I think, the start of um, certainly well before Federation, a good hundred years before Federation, but the historical stuff before the 60s is in the Grimm books, which is archived and made available by a historical organisation instead. So if you just go to the health and welfare site, you might not get what you're looking for if you want a long time series. Uh, the other place where you can quite often get useful stuff, particularly broad oversight of Australia, I found, um, which people don't tend to go to, is international organisations. So you do get people um, from science stuff and visualisations-based stuff with NASA through to a lot of economic and financial data and development data from uh, United Nations and CIA World Factbook and so forth. So it's, if you go broader than your jurisdiction, you may also actually find someone's done that work who had the funding to do it. And uh, like going to organisations who work with it, um, if you can find some experts who might know more about researching the topic, you're probably going to shortcut a lot of the digging. That said, I think we're going to do now something practical about when you actually have to do the digging yourself. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to focus on Google because, to be practical, most of you probably use it. There are other search engines. Um, my colleagues like DuckDuckGo and it has its wonders, but I will assume that most people are using Google. Probably most of you are familiar with the really basic stuff, so you can use Booleans. You can tell Google if you're getting the wrong data. Um, for example, quite often when I've been looking for cycling data, which is one of our favourite demonstrations on GovPond, you also get cycling data for um, cycles in the ocean. So if you can cut out marine with a negative, it can help you narrow down your data. And you can also do it if you put quotes around, get rid of a phrase, put quotes around, keep a phrase. And also they took away the plus operator a few years ago when they made Google Plus, but you can still make it limit the search to a specific word instead of guessing kind of stem words and other words by putting the quotes around it. However, it has a bunch of other stuff, and you can find more about this on the internet, and there are dozens and dozens of other things that you can do to make Google give you a better search results when you're looking for something. And it's particularly useful because I find that a lot of Western Australian public sector data, and we don't have the luxury of it being in a central repository, um, isn't always, sometimes it's accidentally crawled by Google and the department doesn't know, sometimes it doesn't have the right headers, um, it doesn't come up very easily in the search you're looking for, which you probably know if you've been working in this field. So if you get a little bit trickier with Google, you can help dig out some stuff um, or cull out a lot of the stuff that's obscuring what you do need. Um, if you use the pipe, which is top right of your keyboard, um, the programmers will know what it's called, everyone else maybe not. Um, it does um, an and or search for a word, which is quite handy. Um, and I think that you can also use a capital or in between to do that, which is quite good. Um, it also finds sentences with missing words, so you can use a wildcard in there. And if you use the number of asterisks, then it will find the words, which is quite good if you're looking for a phrase where there are two versions of the phrase and it's just a keyword that's different. Um, it also does a number range search. So if you happen to be looking for something, and I particularly like this for looking for something in a number of dates, um, so maybe if I'm looking for something across the 1980s, then you can use your keyword and you can put your range of numbers in there. Um, they have given this somewhat because people were using it to find social security numbers and credit card numbers very creatively, but it generally works. Um, you may get a capture to put in if it thinks you're a bot doing it, um, but it's particularly handy for date range stuff. The other most powerful thing that I found that I use is Cite, um, which if you haven't used it, it's brilliant. Um, brings your results only from the site you specify. However, you can bring it back to a country level domain or a .gov domain or in a state department um, domain. That's excellent for, I have to say, hopefully no one from the ABS is here, but the search for the ABS is really, really frustrating and doesn't seem to make any decisions about what you're really looking for. But if you use Google and search the AVS site, then it seems to be easier sometimes to find what you actually want because Google does kind of make some assumptions about what you're actually asking that are quite often right. Um, and it really helps going through if you want data from a site like health.wa.gov.au. Um, it's often also better than the site's uh, search. And the site's quite often a keyword search anyway that just turns up a bunch of things so you can limit it in other ways in your Google search. And there are a bunch of other things that you can use to narrow it down. So Google actually has, uh, these are some of the ones that I find most useful. There are more that you can look up. There are a lot of websites that go through these. 
Um, you can search only in the title for a page, which is nice if you're getting too many results and you're looking for something very specific. You can search in the URL um, and it'll find your string anywhere in the address. You can search for a bunch of words all in the title or the URL and my favourite one is you can search by file type, which is incredibly handy if you know the Department of Health has some great Excel files they do. Um, I'm not sure they know they're there, but they're great. I don't think they're personally identifiable. <laughs> um, and if you search for um, XLS files um, and do the various new versions of that extension, it will turn up everything on their website that has them and then you can narrow them down by keyword. Um, so that's particularly good if you're looking for particular types of of data, which is quite nice. And you sometimes get interesting things come up too, like the phone numbers and the whole contact list for an organisation that they happen to have had crawled by Google. Um, you can also go broader. Um, Data.gov.au is actually quite a good example of this. So you can find all the sites that link to a site um, and all the sites that are related to a site. And you'll often find quite a lot of things that are relevant that might not have popped up in any other search. Um, I think if you go to the data.gov.au and do a related search, you'll get all the state data portals and Ausgol and stuff like that. So that's actually quite nice for getting an overview of a cluster of websites that might be able to help you do what you're trying to do. And of course, you can combine them all. Um, this particular one is a guy who's a recruiter um, looking for programmers in Missouri, and he has this up as a Google alert. So he's narrowed it down to the most effective term to find people who have two particular coding skills. Um, and sometimes they describe themselves as a developer, programmer, or engineer. So it will capture all of those in the region. And um, he basically gets alerted every time someone's resume comes up online, or if it's in the title or the URL, so it doesn't do too many false positives. Um, so it's um, getting a little bit more complex with the queries. Actually, you can get in incredibly complex um, queries, and people use them for, if you look up Google, um, Google hacking, people use it for penetration and finding stuff that shouldn't be on the web. So um, you can find a lot of webcams and data because you know something they'll put in the URL that's always in the URL. So if you find the right ones for a webcam, you can see all sorts of live stuff in China. It's amazing. <laughs> Favourite of these Indian guys in the call centre. They have a lot of fun and don't seem to do much work. A lot of these, if you don't uh, know how to do it or you forget how to do it in the search bar, um, Google does have an advanced search. I couldn't actually find the link last time I looked on the front page, so it's there. Um, and the search tools button also helps you refine the stuff down, which is sitting on that top bar just under the search once your results come up. And that actually has some quite interesting things. So if you're looking for a more academic document, say, you can actually go up there and one of the things it filters by, for example, is actually the reading level. So you, it tells you the percentage of the results that's found at each reading level and if you want to pick a higher reading grade or a lower reading grade. So it does help you narrow down the type of results in a softer way. It also helps you do, um, as you can do with the news, you can also do with web results and limit the web results to a, um, a time range. So if you're getting a lot of results from the 1980s or something, then you can actually say, I only want to see web pages that have been updated in the last year, which is quite handy sometimes if you're doing current research for government stuff. Now, unfortunately, um, or fortunately, depending on who you are, um, Google doesn't crawl everything, and other search engines don't crawl everything. In fact, they crawl a very, very tiny percent, and there are a bunch of estimates out there as to how tiny, but it is very small of everything that is actually accessible online. And sometimes it's because um, it just can't get to it. It's in a database, you need to use a search um, on the site to find it. Sometimes it's because people, like I was saying, um, don't know what they're doing very well and it doesn't have the right keywords, does, just doesn't turn up even though you think it should and it's the right thing. Fortunately, Google itself has developed some quite good products that um, Google products come and go, but these ones have stuck around so far. Um, and you can get the list of everything they do, which is quite interesting, and it's very, very big. And also the stuff they got rid of, which is very sad. Um, <laughs> but these help you start searching um, beyond the visible web that comes up in your ordinary web search. Um, Google Scholar and Google Books um, both have access to both paid stuff and a lot of free stuff and free samples. Um, you can get a lot of ebooks and academic papers that are actually open. Um, and quite a lot that are a reasonable price if you work for an organisation that's happy to purchase it as well. 
Um, and obviously, I think most people are familiar with the image search. They also have uh, a few different things that I hadn't come across till recently. They actually have Google Finance that has a lot of financial information, and they have something called the Public Data Explorer, which seems to be a bit of an experimental thing, but it's worth having a look up um, and seeing what they're pulling into that as well. And I think they have Australian stuff. And then there are a bunch of specialist search websites. So InfoMind does academic documents. Uh, GoPubMed does bioscience. I was talking about what we've been working on, GovPond, which is exclusively Australian government-focused stuff, um, occasionally education-focused as well. So um, some of them are meta search engines as well, like GovPond, which goes out to a bunch of sites that might be relevant and pulls out everything for you, which is obviously quite handy if it's going to the right sites. And fortunately, most of our Australian sites use a CCAN database, which makes it very easy for us to actually query them. Um, so it's all standardised, so we can actually pull results out of a bunch of things. So if you're setting up a data site, set up a CCAN, and we'll, we'll include you, and it's fantastic. <laughs> the other thing that I found people don't often consider is uh, resource lists. Um, there is always some geek out there who is super excited about what you have to do for work, and they will have published some personal web page with little dancing gifs that will have a list of their 20 favourite sites on their topic, and they're probably an academic, and it's a horrible website on their <laughs> personal domain at the university. But it's quite often good because they're not web people, but they actually know their stuff. Um, so if you can include resource list, um, in your search with your topics, you'll quite often turn up some stuff that wouldn't necessarily be linked or come up elsewhere, or it might take you in a different direction for something you hadn't considered. So that's actually really valuable. But my favourite thing, and I found this recently, trying to in include stuff on GovPond that starts to give people, if it doesn't give them the data set they want, to actually lead them into the invisible web. Um, if you search for government domains and the word database, um, it's, and you can also do the in URL search for database. It comes up with a staggering amount of stuff that I've never seen, that I never knew the government had online um, from all sorts of departments. So we've been trying to include these in GovPond, so if people search for a keyword, they might, and we've got various tags, and we've tagged one just web search. And so there are hundreds and hundreds of databases sitting around that don't really seem to come up when you're looking for a particular file or looking for a particular extension. But then if you search database on the topic, you'll realise that someone has a site you can go to search that that you've never heard of and didn't come up. So that's very, very big and interesting to see what's out there. And some of them are really excellent, but don't necessarily come up if you're being more specific. The other thing that I found that maybe it is a generational thing, but um, I am the library nerd for my colleagues because I don't know how to use the library, which is, is sad, but um, don't be afraid of your library even if you've grown up with the internet. Um, and you can do it online. The first uh, website I think is fantastic is the National Library of Australia. Um, they have a staggering amount of content and they seem to have a bit more funding as well. Um, so they've been able to digitise a whole lot of material you can get scans, um, for example, of every major newspaper and regional newspaper in Australia going back to their um, foundation. Um, and they've run optical character recognition and they crowdsource corrections for it. And that's just incredible, run your house address through it and just the volume of information that's sitting there. So they're trying to do stuff like that, but it also, um, they search Pandora, which is an archive of websites which sometimes turns up stuff that has disappeared. Um, some of you might have used the Wayback Engine or Google Cache to see stuff that's disappeared on the web as well, which are quite good. Um, Pandora seems to do a little bit more academic stuff and Australian-focused stuff, so you can pull up things that aren't there on the web anymore. They have books and also ebooks, and they search across all the libraries in the state. And in the ebook section, you'll find ebooks that are free, um, some ebooks that are paid, but um, it's a really, really big meta search and can be quite useful. And they have journals, they have a whole section of um, diaries and letters if you're doing historical research, they have maps and lots of photos. And all you need to do is sign up online. And if you're doing stuff with the newspaper archive, um, volunteer and correct the things when you see the spelling mistakes too. Um, beyond that, state libraries um, in this country are amazing. And it's worth actually going down to the desk and you have to take your address and sign up. I've been teaching my workmates how to do this because at 30 it's really challenging. <laughs> um, the depth and the breadth of resources in the state library, as along with the State Records Office, one of the major custodians of data and information in the state, is pretty amazing, and their stuff goes back a long way, and they have stuff you won't find anywhere else. 
And they also have access to, again, a lot of e-books. And it's stuff that you would otherwise pay for, but if you have a library card, you can put in your barcode and it checks them out on Adobe Reader for one day or seven days. So that's quite handy. Um, there is a way to get around the DRM, but that would be unethical, so find it out yourself. Um, they also found um, every record that my uh, every document my agency has ever put out is sitting in the State Library, um, in the Batty Library, which is the WA specific section, and most libraries also have a very specific section. And they have also consultant reports and really obscure stuff. I was doing some work into regulation of the taxi industry in WA, and it was the only place in the world where you could find the issues paper from the only report that had ever been done in taxis in Western Australia 20 years ago. Um, and the only way you would know that this exists, I, we didn't even find it um, by searching on the web. It didn't come up as an inquiry. We only found it by searching actually the library catalogue website and went, oh, someone did an inquiry on what we're doing one on. That's amazing. Um, so that's really good. Um, the librarians are really, really helpful once they know you're not crazy. They get a lot of crazy people in there. I know people have worked there, but as soon as you're not there just to look at face, that Facebook or do inappropriate things behind the stats, then they'll be super helpful. So you introduce yourself. Um, they can also have a whole lot of stuff that's not sitting on the shelves. So you can register as a researcher, which just needs some proof of address, and they give you a sticker on your library card in WA, and I expect it's quite similar in other areas. And then you have access to all of their stuff that's in their stacks, which is just a huge batter of stuff stored upstairs that isn't out for public consumption, or just for flicking through, but it's totally accessible. Um, they can pull it out for you. If it's rare stuff, you have to go into the reading room, and you can have gloves and photograph it. It's pretty exciting. Um, which is how I got some of these reports, because they seem to be the only copies left anywhere and no one has digitised them yet, because the scale of the stuff they have, it will take time to actually get through all of this stuff and they don't always have the resourcing. I know state records don't. So sometimes you actually have to go down and pick up the only piece of paper that has ever shown what you're looking for because they just haven't got through the digitisation process yet. Uh, we'll get better. They also have a lot of microfiche and microfilm, which if you grew up in the 90s are probably intimidating if you never got taken to the library by your school, but they can show you how to use the machines and it's not very hard and you can get their cameras to photograph it and put it to USB stick. And they have a wonderful collection of maps, as do state records, if you're doing spatial stuff or spatial historical stuff that isn't yet digitised. So I found doing historical stuff, um, doing economics, doing architecture, doing finance, um, I've always found my state library incredibly useful and they just seem to tap into a whole pool of knowledge that um, isn't necessarily accessible on the web and make you realise how much more is out there than just doing a search. So it is worth making friends with your library. The other thing it lets you do, which is great, is obviously you can go in and if you found a resource that they have and a book that might be useful, you can go and look at the book on the shelf and the books next to it. Quite often stuff that maybe, again, their search isn't perfect, maybe didn't turn up in your search, but it's handy. But you can also do it online at the State Library of WA and I presume other libraries, where if you come up with an item in their search and then you click on the category underneath it, it will show you in order all of their categories and how many items are in that category. And they're very specific, so they can be um, digitised maps, mining, Katanara, specific company, and then you'll get other things which start with the same stem and hierarchy next to it. So you can pretty much browse the um, browse digitally um, as well, and that's incredibly useful as well for getting your hands on stuff that just um, isn't searchable in usual ways. The other thing that the library will help with, um, but is also available in a bunch of other places um, to turn up information and data that is out there but not easily findable, is again um, utilising people's existing work. Um, going through uh, recently doing an inquiry um, into a bunch of economic stuff that the Productivity Commission had done some great reports on, weren't exactly what we were looking for, um, but they had wonderful referencing at the end. And when you sit down and look at the referencing, you might not expect titles. People might have come up with a blingy title to make their economics more exciting or something like that, so it makes it hard to find. But you'll actually go through and find this wonderful list of secondary things that you can go through and follow up, and that will lead you down the rabbit hole to a lot more stuff that might have what you're looking for in it. Um, newspaper articles generally cite the source when they're not in Western Australia. Uh, we won't comment on the West Australian. 
Um, Wikipedia citations are actually fantastic, and a lot of stuff is online. Um, sometimes the citations don't match what people have said they say, but um, they actually take you to some quite good stuff where other people have done the legwork of finding the resources true. And of course, this is um, in libraries, sometimes not online, um, and maybe vaguely related, don't come up to search. Um, if you can go and find stuff like that, they also have excellent referencing. Now, this really should probably be first, and I always leave it till last. <laughs> other humans are one of your greatest resources if you can find the right other human. And the difficult thing, I think, is finding the person who has the access, the authority, is willing to provide it and understands what you're asking for. Um, and sometimes the willingness to provide it can be a really big stumbling block because they don't understand why you need it, they don't understand what value it adds, they're worried they will get in trouble for providing something, which um, sometimes quite peculiar. I think it comes possibly generational and a level thing, but people seem to want to whitelist, particularly when you get up to director level, people want to whitelist what they release instead of going, we'll give it out unless there's reason not to. So for example, it's really hard to get your hands on the Excel file from Treasury that has 20 years of budget data that is completely available in PDFs. And I've been chasing this for months. Um, but giving it to me in an Excel file needs a lot of authorization, and then you kind of hit the ceiling of people who don't believe in giving stuff out to people because of risk, although we're not sure what risk. So you can run into, you have to be quite persistent, and it's not always worth doing it, but it is nice if you can break through that and get what you're after. Um, but fundamentally, as well, it's really important to get through uh, to them what you're actually asking for. Now, Usually what I find is, again, like I was saying earlier, it's really great to go to them with the, this is what I'm doing, and this is what I'm trying to produce, and this is what I'm trying to show. Um, every time I've asked someone for data and just said, I want this data set, it inevitably comes back with the wrong thing. Um, but also people tend to be experts in their field. And so if you go, I'm trying to do this, and we think this might work, they come back and go, oh, that doesn't exist, but there's this much better way and no one's told you about it. Uh, so it's much easier to approach people and explain what you're trying to do. Um, people are usually pretty willing, if you're not talking to the right person, to actually introduce you. People like to connect people. So if they can't help, ask them who can. Um, I found um, meeting a person tends to be a lot better. It's really hard to say no to someone when you're having coffee. So it's quite good to meet up with people um, from other organisations who might have stuff that's useful background or useful for what you're working on and buy them a coffee. Um, if you email, they'll probably go, oh, no, I can't do that, and I'd answer. In coffee, they might actually pursue that. Um, and do your homework. So if you look like an idiot because you don't know what they do in front of them, they will also not help you. Um, but mainly, and there are a lot of people in government who do act as gatekeepers, and in Western Australia, we are one of the least progressive governments, unfortunately, in releasing stuff and having an ICT policy and data policy to actually encourage people to get out there and do this. Our government doesn't seem to have the same understanding that we're seeing in other states that we actually need to consider this and tell people they should be sending information out unless there's a reason not to. Um, so you will run into gatekeepers, particularly here, but if you treat them like an expert and ask for their opinion and their advice, then they are less likely to act as a gatekeeper and go the extra mile to try and help you. Sometimes they can't approve it and you get stuck. Getting in contact with the people in charge um, who are senior enough that they can tell everyone else to do whatever they want is sometimes necessary and useful. Um, Cold calling is sometimes good. Cold emailing has worked very well for me because bless the public sector and a lot of corporations these days, they have their domain at first name dot last name. <laughs> I gave across um, a bunch of slides on a presentation that was done back in 95 for the Productivity Commission where two guys who were economists had done a paper. It was exactly what I was trying to write on. No one else had done this. And it had never been put online. All it had was the title and their names. And so I did a bit of um, internet stalking, which is very handy, and found that the guy um, had moved on from the Productivity Commission and was now the head of economics for the National Australia Bank. Um, fortunately, he has a first name and a last name, works for NAB. So I emailed him and said, hey, back 20 years ago, you did this thing, and we think it would be really useful. And two days later, he went, oh, yeah, I had to dig this up, but here you go. So it's well worth doing it. Um, I've had quite a lot of success. Um, also, if you go to your more senior staff, 
they will actually quite often introduce you to someone who can help if you explain what you need and why you need it. Um, so they can act as an intermediary. Some organisations are excellent on social media, some are less so, but if you have one who's actually, um, I think Langate's particularly interactive on Twitter, um, they're not too bad. Um, Langate CEO is very nice on Twitter. Um, so there are ones where, if you can see they're interactive like that, the social media people sometimes like to cut through the red tape and actually help you and answer questions. Um, the other thing I found really useful, if you have to get your senior people to sit down with their senior people to say, yes, you really can have the data you want, um, the most useful thing I found when I can't find a phone number anywhere is just to ring the main line for, for Western Power or for the Department of Transport and say, oh, my CEO would quite like a meeting with your CEO. Can you, I don't want his details. Can you just give me his assistant's details and we'll set something up? Email the assistant. It happens. Like, their job is to attend meetings and their job is to set up meetings. And they just show up. So sometimes if it's a last resort and you really need to do that, that's actually quite a good way to do it. Don't abuse it or people won't turn up anymore. Um, broadly, networks are wonderful. Um, I'm on an Open Knowledge Foundation mailing list which people ask for data and they give out data and seem to do research for each other for the love of doing research. And that's fantastic. Um, you can meet people places like this, um, going to social and professional events. I think Keith might mention later there are things in Perth like GeoRabble, which is spatial and GIS experts, um, where I've met some incredibly useful people who do all sorts of data work. Um, and it's well worth going to, very interesting. Um, get people to introduce you to people who do things. I've met the most, we've met um, cooperative research centres who want to fork our code for GovPond, um, people from the ABS who are doing similar stuff. And it's amazing in WA because of the lack of the government's uh, movement on ICT. There are a lot of people here who are actually working quietly away at doing things or getting around it. And it's, it really would be good and it's something that I want to work on to connect those people so we're not duplicating work and we know each other. Um, training courses and forums are quite good and there are things like um, meetup.com has made up groups for open data and ICT across <laughs> Australia where you can meet people. Volunteering at things like GovHat is a great way and once you have these people, send out an email and ask for help. People like to find things to help you and, and help them back. And um, it's really, really useful to actually be able to talk to a bunch of people who are also really good researchers, appreciate that it's hard to get stuff and like to help you find it. So you can see a lot of the stuff, Google will help you, the library will help you, but a lot of it actually comes from knowing people who know people who know things and can actually put you in touch. A couple of things I'll just do briefly, um, because they're done better elsewhere, I think. Um, one is data quality, which uh, Pia touched on as well. Um, obviously, all data has limitations. Um, the organisation I know that's actually best at doing this is the ABS. They have data quality framework. Um, so when you do find what you're looking for, um, it may have limitations, it may do what you want well enough uh, with some cautions. Um, so if you want to look at how another organisation does it, you can go, and I've linked it in the link bundle, to their data quality framework, and they talk about the kind of things you need to disclose when you give data up to make it more meaningful, um, and what to advise people about. Um, they, quite often, you'll find stuff annotated in their files where their data's been borderline between being not useful enough to release and not reliable enough and really good, so they annotate it. Um, so they've put a lot of work into this and they look at a whole bunch of things like accuracy and all the things around the wheel, um, where it comes from, institutional environment, how it's reported and stuff like that. Um, so it is really important to consider when you get your hands on what you want and given that we're still progressing in Australia with standardising things and how we um, disclose information, things often kind of won't come in exactly what you need and you may need to make some calls about whether it helps you do what you want. So it is really important to let your audience know um, if you have used it, but there are some things to consider. Now, given that you're probably going to get messy data where it's imperfect if you're doing these things, um, there are some tools that help you. Um, there's Open Refine and Data Angler are actually quite good for cleaning up messy stuff. There are lots of data format converters. Um, these days there are a lot of things that scrape PDFs and turn them into Excel. They don't do it perfectly, um, but they do do it and can save you a lot of time. 
and Google Docs um, and Adobe software do optical character recognition. So when you get that horrible photograph of some government report with tables in that you totally need and it has 10 pages of tables, they can pull out numbers for you, um, which may need some corrections afterwards but can save an immense amount of time. And I know with PDFs, it's public servant nightmare of how much time you actually spend just keying in numbers that you've seen on a PDF and you can't get in a format you can use. Um, Excel's really fantastic. Um, and most people who've worked um, in a financial or modeling um, area have some skills already. Um, the best thing about it is that there's so much documentation online and so many good websites. So if you Google for um, how to do something, you will find it. Um, some of their own functions are quite good. They can turn um, numbers into dates or back to numbers and so forth. Um, there are lots of plugins and macros people have made to work around data problems. And if you don't code, don't be scared of the macro recorder. It does stuff in VBA, but it c you can also just use it by pressing record if you're doing a repetitive task and cleaning up messy data you have that, for example, if you have um, a bunch of files that all need some columns removing and some stuff done and some formatting and you get them every day or you have 100 of them, um, record it once and run it over all of them. Um, and you don't even need to go into the back end to code to do it. That said, code. <laughs> um, it's very accessible. Um, languages like R, which is quite good for finance, and Python, which is quite good for everything. Um, there are heaps of tutorials on the internet, um, heaps of free tutorials and advice, um, snippets of code you can use and look through. So if you are interested and you're open to learning to code, it certainly can help you get your data sets into shape. Um, that said, friends can also help you do that. Um, GovHack is a wonderful place to go if you're not a coder, but you want to meet other coders um, and work on a project. Um, then you quite often can find people who will be able to help you later with work down the track when you say, I've got this data, I can't use it, I've run into a problem, and they may know. I mean, I've seen um, some of my friends turn around and go, oh, that's a hassle to do in Excel, I can do it with four lines of Python and just fix something. So it is worth considering. And you know, sometimes you're only gonna have to do it once, and it might take an hour, but you'll never have to do it again. You need to know when to draw a line. I'm going to do copyright and referencing really briefly um, when you find your data because I'm not a lawyer. Um, and also data referencing is a little bit up in the air in that because it's quite new, there are various, um, if you look online, various different views and standards that are being developed to reference data um, more appropriately. Um, most Australian governments are good in that they've gone down the Creative Commons path, so with any of their licenses, it's quite clear what you can use it for. Um, WA, because we haven't done that yet, I'm gonna say yet, um, it's all under Crown Copyright. Um, Crown Copyright's quite good when you find um, your data, you will generally be able to use it for um, any research purpose, um, an academic purpose. Uh, it also does something nice, as far as I understand, which you wouldn't get with other standard copyright, um, where you can actually, if it's not for profit, you can copy whole books and things, and I think that's actually okay from what I've read under Crown Copyright, so check that. But, um, and reference your data carefully, because you won't be the last person who works in this spreadsheet or document, and if you haven't put the ABS numbers of your file in, they'll probably never find where you got the data from ever again. So that will help people, and you'll appreciate it if someone's done that to you. Going to quickly go through some uh, useful resources. Um, you're probably aware of the most obvious ones in the, the ABS um, and the state and federal data websites are a good start. Um, they can push you in the direction of the right agencies who either may have what you're looking for or they may know who has what you're looking for. And as I said before, if you actually look at the list of departments and agencies who exist, they can, might also give you some pointers or areas you haven't thought of. And as I mentioned before also, um, a lot of international organisations collect global data that also um, covers a whole lot of Australian data. Um, if you're interested in keeping up with what's out there, using data better, um, or covering what's going on with open knowledge, um, there are a bunch of different blogs which I've linked in the bundle. Um, things like information is beautiful and flowing data have got more of a visualisation focus. So they're better for when you've got your stuff and you actually want to use it and present it in a meaningful way. Um, NYU has the GovLab, which is brilliant um, and talks all about governance and open governance. Um, Guardian's got a great data blog with a journalistic focus, but it's pretty broad. And the Open Knowledge Foundation um, also, which is, has the Australian branch, but is, is global, has a blog on um, opening up content and data and information. 
you can also go along, and there are a number of hacks. WA is starting to get them. We've had the first Gov hack uh, this year just gone, and we'll hopefully see things like health hack coming over here as well. Um, strongly encourage people who are not programmers and are just public servants who are interested in getting better at finding things and using things to go along to these. Um, favorite example is a historian that I met who went along to Gov hack this year. She doesn't code, she doesn't do anything technical. She loves Perth, she loves Perth history. She teamed herself up with a bunch of coders and made a really cool history app um, going through some of the uh, metadata from some of the archives um, in the state and from Trove. And she said it was the best experience because she met people who were really useful to her and it also opened her eyes to what she could do um, with the, the resources that were already available publicly but she didn't necessarily have the skills to utilise. Um, Open Knowledge Foundation, we're basically seeding it here at the moment, so it's very small. We've done the first couple of meetups and um, hopefully getting behind sponsoring and um, supporting with volunteering some of the hats and stuff that will go on. Um, if you're interested in being involved, you can find out more about the working group on the website. And that particular page also has the uh, people who are the ambassadors for each state and the specialist ambassadors for different areas. So they're actually really helpful, great people. And if you have a question or you're chasing information or ways to get to information, then they may be able to help you. Um, as I said, meetup.com actually has some groups and I'm sure there are Facebook groups and so forth that also have a focus on networking people and you can go to events like if you're interested in spatial data, GeoRabble and so forth. Uh, the other thing that's really useful for learning but also networking, there are actually some fairly good training courses out there and the best I've been to are actually run by the ABS. Uh, they have a course which is called, uh, called Turning Data into Information, which I think is two days. And then they have one that is using data to, and writing um, good technical and accessible papers uh, using the data you've done. They will teach you and help you to understand their data and how they gather it and how reliable it is, um, but also a bunch of um, starting back at high school good statistical techniques, um, which is a really nice refresher if you haven't done it for a while. And it's a really good place to meet other people who are quite often, quite often you meet people there who are, they're not statisticians and they aren't necessarily technical people, but they are public servants who work with data, who can be one of your most useful resources. You can also get a bunch of free books that will help you up your skills in doing research um, and in advoca uh, advocating for um, open data. Uh, the first one, the Open Data Handbook, is good if you're working in an organisation where you're working with your own data rather than researching other people's to help you to actually open it up or to show to the people in your organisation what you're trying to do and why. Uh, the Data Journal one obviously has a focus on practical journalism skills. Beyond Transparency is really quite good and recommend you read it. It's very new and it's a lot of case studies about governments that have opened up data and um, across the world and the benefits that they have reaped from that. Um, there's an open metadata handbook too, which is about metadata for collections from our GLAM, so galleries, libraries, archives and museums, if that's your area, um, which also helps make your organisation's information more accessible to others who are doing this research. And the last one is absolutely fantastic. Um, there's a book called Untangling the Web, and it's by some consultants or someone at the NSA, and someone FOI'd this recently. And it's 600 fantastic pages that take you from just knowing maybe how to use the internet um, through to not just Google, but um, doing advanced searches in a bunch of search engines, spe specialist search engines, doing personal research on people um, in great, great detail, and it's very practical and very clever. It's hideously designed, like all NSA materials, if you've seen the slides. Um, and because it's been foi it's up there and it's free, and I'd really encourage you to get it and flick through, because it's just, if it was on government stuff, I would have brought it today and said, just read it instead of listening to me, because it's very, very heavy. Um, and the most important skill you have when finding government data or cleaning government data and so forth is actually tools and resources, Google, tools and so forth come and go all the time. You might use one, it might shut down, which is unfortunate, but these things happen. Um, so it's actually better to have the skills to go and find tools that are out there when you need them. So instead of going, oh, it's shut down or not knowing how to find something, just go and search. And particularly online data conversion, if you're getting a horrible PDF, you want to turn into something usable or various things. There are heaps and heaps of free tools on the internet to do that. Um, in fact, I've linked to, uh, of all things, a wiki how um, in the bundle on how to turn PDFs into um, Excel documents three ways, just to give you an idea. Um, so, and also if you want to learn things like coding, free tutorials. 
Um, there are also a bunch of meta-searches of, of varying quality, um, which I've linked some for you, um, which are a really good place to find tools and more information. And if you are interested in learning skills for specialised software, um, for example, uh, Beautiful Soup is quite a good example where if you're trying to collect data from an organisation that... Um, so a number of organisations, I think the WA Police are like this and a few others where they publish data and then it comes down from the website or there's data on websites that's um, in a format that you can't pull it down easily other than copying and pasting and spending two hours fixing it. Um, there's, it's screen scraping software, so you can, if you want to learn things like that, they can help you actually pull off stuff and automate it um, off the internet into a format that you can use as well. And finally, uh, there's a few Australian-specific things. That's um, our site, GovPond. There's also OzGol, which is uh, more focused if your organisation is looking at making this research work easier for other people. They can do some hand-holding and help and legal advice and so forth on how to open up your um, stuff and come out and talk to you. And if you want to actually get a taste um, of some government departments that do a really, really good job of opening up their data, um, these are a few that are worth checking out. I was uh, on Twitter a couple of months ago. Someone had mentioned, I think, to Pia um, when she talked about government data um, and what you would like to see. Someone had replied with, oh, it would be good if our government even opened up anything. And at first when I saw that, she didn't even search, you're not trying. But I, <laughs> I was talking to a, another colleague um, at an OKFN thing, and she's like, well, if smart people who are following people like Pia uh, asking that. Maybe we need to ask why we can't find these things in the first place or why smart people who are looking for help data can't find the help data. So we do have some way to go and definitely WA with that. But yeah, these are some organisations that do a great job, release a mammoth amount of stuff and quite interesting stuff as well. Um, lastly, social media is a really good place. Um, personally, I found Twitter is the most useful for making contacts. Um, found there are a lot of open government people on there, a lot of data nerds, a lot of GIS nerds, um, and generally very helpful. Um, also things like, I suppose what you put into it is what you get out of it, but I found I follow the Indigenous X account, which has various Indigenous tweeters, um, and sometimes they ask if anyone knows any data or statistics, and um, so if it's something that I think I can research, or I might have found for GovPond, um, write back, send them links, and people I found very much do the same for me as well. So it's worth building networks online as well. And you find things like even Reddit has a couple of really good um, open data and data sets um, communities that are worth following that turn up a lot of interesting stuff and the tools for acquiring data as well. Uh, what I'm really interested in, if anyone has any suggestions um, particularly, um, is that what I've been talking to you is stuff that's works for me. And we don't tend to teach these skills very well. Most organisations, you turn up and you do your job and they hope that you know how to research and that you pick it up. Um, so I've been telling you some of the stuff that I've discovered over my career that just makes life a little bit easier. Um, but I think the thing is that everybody works this out for themselves and we're not necessarily very good at sharing. So I was hoping that if there's anyone in the audience who's found anything that works very well for them in getting information that they need, whether it's dealing with people or dealing with internet search engines or elsewhere, um, if they would be able to share it, that would be fantastic. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> Oh, also, if you have any questions. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, not really about uh, searching, but about visualization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a product. It's not open source, but it's just magic. It's called Tablo. Sorry, what's it called? Tablo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure it's the proper pronunciation in English. Okay. But why for me it's magic? Because I don't really call and they can use it. Yeah. So it's, it's really a fantastic tool for the non coding. Right. You get to your data set and Magically, it will find patterns Ooh. and draw curves, and it's just. How do you spell it? Uh, Tableau is. is actually, it Tableau is, is a. It's French word. So it's the French word Tableau? It's Tableau. Yeah. Yeah. So, that sounds great. Can yeah. I check that out? It's, it's magical. Yeah, but it's not open source, and they have uh, one version. It's, yep. um, it's public. Mm -hmm. So you can use it for free, you can, you can train yourself. Okay, I'll find that and add that to the link bundle um, after with this, so you can find it. Oh dear, we should let you guys go and have lunch. <laughs> um, does anyone have anything else? I'll let Pia go so you can eat. Yeah, something. 
Uh, sorry, the what? Just search engine, filter public, you know, that Google Tower thing. Oh, yeah. Um, I find using a lot of Booleans and stuff to narrow things down is sometimes the only way to get around it. Um, there are other search engines that don't do it, so it's sometimes worth exploring. But yeah, it's very interesting looking at my work computer and doing a search compared to my home computer and seeing what I get. So usually getting it down to that um, in your URL level is actually will deal with that, unfortunately. Um, okay, so just a couple of quick things. So we'll, we'll head off to lunch. We'll